What do you consider to be the most precious thing that you have? Oftentimes, the response to this question is money or possessions or wealth. And the reality is that money comes and goes. What you lose, you can regain, and perhaps you've lost things before, you've experienced loss in terms of wealth, and then you've gained profits in other years. However, with time, what you lose, you cannot regain. The most precious thing that you have in this world is your time. Your life consists of a number of hours, a number of days, and it's important for us, especially as Muslims, to consider that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by time. Asr. Allah swears by time, and therefore, we should pay attention to the oath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's something valuable coming with this oath. Inna al-insana lafi khus. Verily, mankind is in loss. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Rahman, al-Rahim, al-Khaliq, the Creator, the Merciful, did not create us to be in loss. Therefore, there must be an exception or a continuation to this statement. Verily, mankind is in loss, except for those who believe, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do righteous actions. وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ And they follow and they call upon and they advise and they exemplify, calling people towards uh, truth and towards perseverance or patience. Now, with the oath of time, we can consider that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that mankind is in loss in terms of the use of their time unless their time is used for believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acting upon that belief through actions, proving that you are a true believer, calling people towards truth and calling towards patience and perseverance. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu used to hate for people to waste their time and oftentimes he would say to them, I don't like for you to be idle even in terms of your worldly things. Some people are sitting around not doing anything for this life or even for the next life. They're just killing time. It's also important for us to consider that the Prophet وسلم, as was authentically reported, sometimes would leave a gathering and at the very end of that gathering would recite Surah Al-As. And it was reported from the companions, some of them, that they did this. Uh, the scholars dispute whether or not it is a sunnah that you do every time. However, if you are to reflect on this as an act of worship, every time you depart from a gathering, every time you finish off uh, socializing with your brothers or your sisters, you're reminding one another about the use of time. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْ Mankind is in loss, except for those who believe. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combines it with وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ These two, آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ are combined in the Qur'an more than 50 times to remind us that if you claim you believe, if you claim you're a Muslim, you have to act upon it as well. Your time in this world has to be spent believing in Allah and proving that belief through your action. Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, it was attributed to him that he said that this surah, Surah Al-Asr, as short as it is, he said if this were the only surah that were revealed, it would suffice as a form of guidance for humanity. Why? Because it covers the foundations of everything that we need. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the most precious blessing that you have, the blessing of time.